Here we go. Hi, I'm Erica. You ever play Concentration? Or some people call it Memory. My friends and I play it all the time. I'm the best at it. The object, if you don't already know the rules, is to find two cards that match. Boom! So, my friends and I have added a rule. Anytime you make a match, you get candy. Candy, 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 candy. A rule, and rules are part of life. Yes! You've got to talk about rules when you're talking about responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Of course, the rules don't say I have to eat candy every time I get a match. So, usually, I save it for later. This is what I've won so far. I mean, what can I say? I know how to pick them. <laughs> My friends are like, you're too good at this game. Give us some candy. And I'm like, get your own. I might have a problem. No. <gasps> Today's story is one that Jesus told about a man who had a little problem. <laughs> with sharing. Who knows what that's like? <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Bye. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Everywhere Jesus went, large crowds followed him. Some really wanted to learn and change. Some were just curious. Others, like the religious leaders, listened to Jesus' words so they could trap him with tricky questions. But there were some people who just wanted Jesus to back them up, to tell them that their way was the right way. One of these was a man, we'll call him Ezra. Teacher, hey, teacher. Ezra's demand was loud enough that everyone stopped talking to look at him. Uh, are you gonna let me through or what? Ezra shoved through the crowd, dragging another man behind him, his brother. Teacher, you've got to tell my brother here that he has to divide the family property with me. Ezra's brother looked like he wanted to sink straight into the ground. Jesus turned to Ezra. Friend, who made me judge or umpire between you? People listen to you. I thought you could, you know, just settle this. Tell my brother I'm right. Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. That is not what I asked. Jesus didn't argue with the man. Instead, he told a story, a parable. If he had told this story today, it might sound just a little something like this. There once was a rich man whose field grew a fantastic crop of grain. Perhaps it was corn. His manager brought him the good news. Sir, we're set to bring in a bumper harvest of cobs and kernels. Yes! Go me! Oh, well, your employees did an excellent job of preparing the fields. Go me! And there was a lot of sunshine. Go me! And just the right amount of rain. Go me! Uh, yes, go you. Harvest the crop at once! Oh, well, we're working on that. There's uh, just a, a little problem. Problem? Who messed up? Fire them at once! Oh, no, 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 it's a good problem. You, you don't have enough barn space to store all your grain. Huh. huh. I'm just too successful. Go me. Well, I was thinking you could share some of the grain. Share it? Well, yes. Some extra bushels for your employees, maybe give some of it away, popcorn for all the kids in town, hold a cornbread festival for everyone. But, uh, but it's all mine. Oh, yes. 
Yes, it is. I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I can store up all the extra grain for myself. Oh. See to it. I want those new barns up by the time the corn harvest is in. <sighs> yes, sir. The old barns were torn down and brand new bigger barns were built. Perfection. Is the corn harvest complete? Yes, sir. All finished. Excellent. Have the men store it all in these new barns immediately. But, but they're so tired. I said immediately. <sighs> yes, sir. At last, the rich man's entire corn crop was stored in his shiny new barns. He settled back in a comfy deck chair and surveyed his property as the sun set. Go me! Self, you've done pretty well for yourself. You got grain stored away for a lot of years to come. He popped a gourmet corn chip into his mouth. Self, take it easy. Eat, drink, and live it up. You foolish man. The rich man nearly choked on his chip. <coughs> Excuse me? The rich man looked around, but he could see no one. He was entirely alone. Oh, great. Is this supposed to be some God moment where I discover what I've been doing wrong? <laughs> That's exactly what it was. You foolish man. Tonight I will take your life away from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Uh, could we come up with a different ending to this story? But there was no way out for the rich man. He had chosen to focus only on what he could keep for himself. Jesus wrapped up his parable by explaining, That is how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves, but is not rich in the sight of God. We don't know how Ezra responded, but maybe, just maybe, he started worrying less about getting more of his family's stuff. Maybe he started to care a little more about sharing what he did have with his brother. Jesus told the story of a rich man. He had more than enough food for himself to eat, and he kept it all. Every last grain. Don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with saving. It's good to save your allowance money for that new toy you want. It's good to save candy for later instead of eating it all at once. But saving wasn't the problem with the rich man. No, his problem was his heart. He loved himself and his stuff more than he loved other people. And that's not good because people are always more important than stuff. You see, I can't say that I'm a follower of Jesus if I'm going to be selfish with the things I have. Those things don't match. It's our responsibility to share with others. And we all have something we can share. Maybe you have time to share or money or candy. You're going to have all kinds of chances in your life to share with someone who has less than you. Don't miss your chance. Here's a rule for life to remember today. Share what you have. I've got candy to share next time I see my friends. I've got clothes I don't wear anymore that I could donate. And I've got time. If anyone wants to play concentration with me later, although I warn you, I'm pretty much the best at it. <laughs> See you next time. I'll save you some candy.